oh, are they? They're doing the previously thing. Oh, oh, oh do do it again. Do the do a very ominous sounding, very uh, you know, omnipotent God, angry. You know, telling us some uh, information what happened in the last episode for those catching up previously. As it's a wireless charger, a MagSafe charger, I can just slap it on in any angle I want. And there you have it, the TRC splitter kit. Right, so there you go. I now have two boot lights. The second one's been added. It looks completely factory. We've installed 400 LED fiber strands over the whole roof. So now let's get this installed into the car. A few moments later. So while I have the interior all stripped out, there is one thing that I've really wanted to do. And seeing as it's so cold, it's just appropriate that I get this button working. Now at the moment, it's not wired into anything, but I do really want heated seats in this car. Now on this side, there's no button for it. There is a replacement button that I've bought, and to be fair, these pop out quite easily. So I can disconnect it there, remove that and replace the button. But that's not the main part of the job. The job requires a lot of wiring. So over here on the bench, I have the other bits that I need. Now here is the main button with the heated seat switch for the passenger side. This is the heated seat control module. This is what essentially sends power to the seat itself. And then I've got a few plugs that I'm gonna need to add a lot of wires to and run them around the car so obviously having the seats out of the car makes this job a lot more easier, but there is still a lot more stripping to do. I need to take off all these side panels uh, so that I can run all the wiring under the trims and under the carpet to make it an absolute OEM install. Now to help me with this, I have on the system all the wiring diagrams that I need. Uh, so as it says there, this is a seat heating for an Audi A1. They didn't change the way that wiring was done from 2010 all the way through. So that is perfectly appropriate. And if I just scroll down, there's a lot of wiring that needs to be done uh, between, as I said, the seat switches, the seats themselves and the BCM. So of course it will be completely pointless to go through all this effort to get heated seat wiring put in with the switches if I didn't have heated seats themselves to fit into the car. Now the original seats weren't heated, they were just the standard cloth seats. However, I have managed to find some Audi S1 leather heated seats. Along with these heated front seats, I also have this rather nice setup rear bench, which instead of having a third seat in the middle, has this double cup holder setup, which actually works out perfectly for me. You see, the reason I bought the Audi A1 in the first place is to replace my smart car. Now I own a Smart for Two, which is great for just city driving, toddling about and taking the kids to school. I have two daughters, one is six years old, one is just turned two. The two year old as of next year will be going to nursery and that's where this thing comes in. Now the A1 is a perfect replacement for my smart car. I've got two extra seats in the back, which is perfect for my two daughters, but it's still small enough that I can fit in the havoc of a morning school run. And where the cup holders come in perfectly is I can have two car seats, one either side, and the girls can have their drinks right here in the middle. So let's now install the heated seat switches and the wiring, and then we can install these seats into the car. Six hours later. So now the heated seat wiring is all in, as well as the switches. And as promised, I won't leave a single blank. So that's all in place. Down here under the seats, we have these new plugs. These are for the heated seats, one on each side. So that's all done. Another thing I've done is I've swapped out the handbrake. So this is the standard one that was on the car, uh, just plain leather, bit battered. And the one I've now fitted is this one from an Audi S1. This came with the seats, in fact. So it has all the white stitching that the seats do and it matches up nicely. It's a nice little upgrade. So that's now added. So before I throw the seats back in the car, I think I should throw the tunnel in, get the tunnel fitted because it's easier to fit this in while the seats aren't in the way. Uh, but before I install the tunnel, there is one upgrade I've got that goes here. Now this is the most sought after install on the Audi A1. Um, 
and it is just over here. The leather armrest from the Audi S1. Again, this came with the seats as a complete pack. So I've got the armrest here, the bracket that the armrest mounts onto, and the trim piece that goes on the side of the armrest. We also got the full centre tunnel from the S1 as well. So that will all go into the car. Now, as I said, this is the most sought after mod for the A1. It is ridiculously expensive for what it is, but as I got the full interior from the car, I got a massive bargain. Um, so I'm gonna throw this into the car now, and then I'm gonna add in the center tunnel on top. Eventually. Guys, I am so excited to show you what it looks like now in there. Um, Oh, this has turned out way better than I had expected. So the leather seats are now in and they look perfect. Really nice leather S1 seats. Got the armrest there. The new updated handbrake. Yeah, and also I have tested the leather seats. Uh, if I have a, just get in here. So if I press the switches there. So we now have the heated seat buttons working perfectly. I have tested it and they do warm up the seats. So that's perfect. So now not a single blank. Obviously I added the parking button. I also added the TPMS. However, I'm yet to test this one because we need to take the car out for a drive and where the car isn't ready yet to go on the road properly, I haven't been able to test it. But we will test that very soon. Aside from that, the bows, it looks awesome in the doors there with the LED lit up speaker grills. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a complete car now. It looks absolutely awesome. Tell me guys, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you think about the roof and the seats? And how cool does that look? With the full black headliner, the black pillars, black sun visors, and the black mirror, the lights, it's all come together as a complete package. But there is, as always, a few more things that I want to add. So let's jump into it. Now this is the S-Tronic gear stick, as it says there, and it's just a bit tired and worn out looking. And if I'm completely honest, I've never liked this rounded shape gear stick. So I have a nice little upgrade for this. So what I've managed to pick up is the gear stick from an Audi Q3. Now, as you can see, it's a bit different. It's a bit larger. It has S-Tronic written across the top with the perforated leather sides. Uh, this looks much better. It's also even got the white stitching on the gear gator. Now, the silver trim doesn't matter as that's for the Q3 that won't fit the A1, but this pops out of that pretty easily. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna change it with the one that's currently in the car. That is the standard A1 gear stick. It's out of the car and I just put it back into the Q3 trim because well, it's gonna go in the bin anyway. So there's that. And if that's over there, then in here, we now have the S-Tronic gear stick. And it matches perfectly. So the white stitching on there matches up with the white stitching on there. Love it. There you are. So that's that done. So that part of the interior is done. What do I do next? I'm thinking lighting. Now, just to show you what I mean. Underneath here, right up in that corner we have a tiny little dim white light and that's meant to be the footwell light for the passenger side here now i've mentioned trips a few times as he does led bulbs for us 
Um, he sent over a couple of nice little lights for me to choose from. Uh, let me go grab them and I'll show you what I'm looking at. So I have here a pack of red tested bulbs, some blue bulbs, and only a few white ones left. Now I did have, as the packet suggests, 12 bulbs, but customers have been uh, stealing these uh, because they like the standard white. Um, I'll show you what the white looks like, although I am not planning on using white in the A1. It's between these two. So let's crack this open, show you what it looks like inside of the car. Right, so I've got uh, that board, which is really hard to tell, but there's almost no color in the bulb, which normally means red. Uh, that one, which has yellow in the board, which means white. And this one with some larger yellowy looking things. This is actually light blue or what I like to call coral blue. So if I just use a screwdriver and get under here, pop this light out. There you go. Now I can just pop the old original Audi unit out. So if I take uh, the white one first and you see how much brighter this one is compared to the stock Audi white one. So that there lights up the whole area so well. Damn! Um, so they're really nice. You can see why they're so popular. Now I'll swap out for the red one. Voila, look at that. That's pretty funky. Um, we've got the blue one. There we are, coral blue. That's a really nice color. Uh, oh, in fact, I have another one. Give me a sec. I just remembered I've got another color. Now, it looks orange in there. But I'll show you what it looks like when it's on. Voila, we've got a pink. Now, lovely color I'm not having in my car though. Um, not judging you, if you want this, let me know, we've got them. But uh, yeah, not in my car. I'm gonna go probably for coral blue. I think that's the one that I like the most here. So we just slide it in place and then you pop it back in there. And that's that, coral blue bulbs are a go. Love it. So just repeat that on the other side and then we'll have two fronts. Uh, the A1 doesn't get rear footwell bulbs. Um, that is something that the A3 has, the A5 even has, but for whatever reason the A1 doesn't. And I'm thinking I might just uh, break that trend and install rear footwell bulbs. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it because it doesn't actually have a space for it, but I'm going to figure something out. So now I've just finished off the blue lights on all the footwells. So you've got the front two there and I've custom wired it into the back here. Looks cool. Now, normally the bulb goes into a bulb holder and the bulb holder clicks into place. Um, in this case, the A1 doesn't even have a placeholder for the bulbs. So what I've gone and done is well, I've custom wired it from the front to the back so it comes on in one big circuit. And then I've basically glued the bulbs into place. Um, it can be removed if I want to, but it is protected. It's hard to see, but it's just up there. It's protected behind the bar, so you can't actually kick it either, which is quite cool. So a little update on the back of the car. Uh, the spare wheel was turned up. So I found the information online that apparently you can fit a spare wheel into the car when it's got the Bose amp. The size of this is a bit different to all the other spare wheels that I can find online. Uh, 125 60 18. Now typically online you can find a 125 70 18 and apparently that won't fit the boot uh, and this wheel. So I found this uh, on eBay. Found it on eBay from someone selling it from another A1 um, so I grabbed it, it's here, I'm going to chuck it straight into the car and you guys can see how good it actually looks when it fits in here. So there you go, the spare wheel fits perfectly. Right deep down, you've still got a little bit of that drop-off area here. So yeah, it works, it really works. Now, if I grab this other trim, that foam piece, this literally just sits down on top of it and is now flush with that side. Now, we've also got the screw cap, 
So if we just line that up, secure it down, and like so, that spare wheel is now held in there underneath the boot floor. And it just gives you so much more storage options as well. So some of these spare bits I could chuck things into. Um, got a random triangle that came with the car, but I'll keep it there anyway. I have no idea what that is. But anyway, we chuck some stuff in there, grab the boot carpet. And remember how I said it slots in to these parts here on the little shelvings. You can slot it in. Let's get rid of that. Voila, it is finished. The boot is completely built up. You can't tell at all what's down there, even though I have added the amp, the sub, and the spare wheel with the extra foam insert. Have to say, really good upgrade. Three days later. Now behind me, you can see the car is a little bit wet. It was outside in the rain, um, but it's not the rain that I don't want you to focus on. It's this beautiful front end. Now with the Xenon headlights, the grill, the S1 bumper, and the TRC splitter, this is one menacing looking front end. However, there is one thing I'm gonna change. Now, it wasn't my idea. In fact, I didn't even think about doing this. I found by pure accident a new part and I showed it to Andre. Now, Andre's not here today, but he did influence me somewhat into buying this new part. Um, now, when I showed him the part, uh, the picture of the part at least, he was bouncing off the wall saying, bro, you gotta do it, get that part. And so, yeah, I've done it. I've bought it, it's here, we are gonna fit it, and this is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> We've got a new grill in. Now this doesn't normally exist. This grill shouldn't exist. This grill is of the design of a RS3, RS5. They have this design grill with the wider honeycomb and the quattro lettering at the bottom. Now, someone has gone to the extent to get that design and put it into the shape of an A1's grill. So I am going to now remove this grill and refit that one. Now let's hope that is advertised correctly and that does actually fit that bumper. So I managed to get the grill off. It was way harder to take it off than it was to fit it on in the first place. But it's off, which means... Wow, look at that. What a difference that one grill makes. The red Quattro logo, now that was a custom touch. Uh, the grill actually comes with a grey one, but I had some red ones left over from other grills I've done. And I think that ties in perfectly with the red in the headlights. So guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you like the new grill or should I have kept the old one? It's still there, I can still throw it back on. Well, I don't know, I think I want to keep it. The red just ties in so well, it looks awesome. But let me know your thoughts, what do you think? Love or hate? Now today we're going to do one of the biggest upgrades that you can do to a car and we're going to completely transform this car by changing out the alloys. We have got...